do, as in do more. Do more than expected, do more than is asked. You got to do even more. The year is about 1927. His name is Theodore, Theodore Giesel. He is an up and coming writer. He loves it. I mean, it's a passion. Man, it's beyond a passion. I mean, I think it's, it's in the very marrow of his bone. As a result, he decides that he's going to get a scholarship to Dartmouth. And as a result, man, he's there for just, I mean, he's not even there a semester. Man, the paper finds out about him. He starts writing for the paper. By the end of the year, he writes for the, uh, the school paper in Dartmouth called Jack O'Lantern. I have no idea why it's that way. It is. As a result of it, man, he starts writing for him. And now he's the editor-in-chief. Man, he's, he didn't finish his freshman year. They love him. As a result, man, he goes, man, he's in school, and unfortunately, things happen. Mistakes happen. They invent gin. Gets carried away. He gets tore up. And it, he just did. In the dorm, Dean finds out about it. It's 1927. Man, things don't bode well for him. They did everything they could to keep him from getting kicked out of the school, but he is no longer on the paper. Well, the papers, I mean, they're not blind to it either. They need Theodore. So they change his name, and he writes under a pen name called Z-O-I-S. Z-O-I-S. Some pronounced it Zeus. Some pronounce it Zeus. As a result, man, he starts writing for him. He gets so good that Standard Oil calls him, NBC calls him, uh, uh, Jack Benny called him to help write some of his scripts. Man, he starts writing, and pretty soon the world's his oyster. He's decided that, yeah, he'd like to do a, a little more. He'll write, but he only wants to write about nuclear war, Armageddon, uh, the end times. A teacher approaches him and says, look, Theodore, you, you got to do more. Nobody wants to hear about that. More importantly, if you're going to do it, you, you need to understand people read at the sixth grade level. You, you need to bring it down to where it's, it's interesting. So he rewrites another article on a nuclear war between the Ukes and the Zooks. Big hint. Big hint. Maybe not. My brother and sister in Christ, you see, the, the Ukes like their bread buttered on top. And the Zooks, and the Zooks like theirs buttered on the bottom. As a result, they go to war. The last scene is two generals staring at one another. And then it says at the very last sentence, the end of the war, maybe. She says, you know, you got a good talent for that. But here's the question. She says, I need help with literacy. you got to do more, Theodore. you got the gift. He says, you need to help me help stop illiteracy. She gave him 300 words that are the most popular in the English language. We always used to say Dick and Jane back in the day. Then all of a sudden, man, he gets involved. He writes a story about this thing one and thing two, about a fish that complains. As a matter of fact, he's got this cat walking around with a big hat that's red and white. <laughs> yes, Lord. That was my last clue. Thank you, God. You know, and, dad, and so finally his dad says, well, you know, son, I wish you would have been a doctor. Hence why Dr. Seuss came about. My brother in Christ, it's all about doing a little bit more. That is that gospel. The people in the countryside actually go and get the man who's a deaf mute, and they bring him to Christ. And then they beg him to lay hands on him. They're doing more. Now stop, you're a first century Jew. Let's make sure you understand what's going on. They believe that laying hands, that God can only react within hand's reach. He can't just think it and it's done, i.e., I created the world by thought. They believe he had to put hands on them. I get that. That's why they're saying, will you lay hands on him? My brother and sister in Christ, understand this too. They live in a world where the good Lord decides that he's going to do it, but he takes them away from the crowd. Why? Because he doesn't want the fanfare. This is just about the man. Now remember, now stop. My brother in Christ, go back to Genesis at the very creation, the day of creation, day six, if you will, when he creates man and woman. He spits into the ground, then he takes the ground, and he forms man. 
He doesn't form man in the ground and then spit into it. He spits into the ground. He has all life. He is life. I'm giving life to the ground. Adam, Adama means ground. So whenever somebody spit, as he did on his fingers, to put it on the man's tongue, every Jew there would have taken a step back and said, wait a minute. The only person that's ever done that was God in the garden. And then he touches his ears. Y'all, we are all Thomases. If we can't touch it, kick it, feel it, we don't believe it. Think for a second. Go back. Remember, there was three blind men. One of them came to Christ, and he, put, he spit into the ground. He took the mud, put it on his eyes, and told him to go wash. He's got to walk all the way to the Pool of Salaam, which is like on the other side of Amit. As a result, a blind man is leading people to see. But the, the, he needed something he could touch. The next blind man, he put his hands on his eyes. And this one, when he took him away, he said, what do you say? He said, I see, I see people, but they look like trees. And then he said, okay, his faith is starting to waver. He puts his hands back. The third guy, he said, Lord, I believe in you. He never had to touch him. He's doing it because of their lack of faith. You believed I had to touch him. But so that I can prove to you that that is indeed maybe not the case, I will do it so that you will have faith. Now, my brother in Christ, please understand this. There are three miracles that took place that day. He could hear. His tongue is open. How does he know the language? How does he know what to describe? How can he speak plainly? That's the third miracle. It's the miracle behind the miracle. The one that everybody walks away saying, wait a minute, who taught him that? He's been as that way his whole life. This is why they're so amazed. They've already seen the blind see and the lame walk. He's already seen the dead rise. But for him to do this, for them, man, it was like, man, that he must be the Messiah. Nobody, nobody has done this. Now, my brother in Christ, think about it. The miracle behind the miracle is common. If you and I were at Lazarus' place when Martha and Mary came out and said, Lord, if you had been here, my brother wouldn't have died. Martha. Mary, I'm the way, I'm the truth, I'm the life. Well, we know that, Lord, and someday he'll be with you all eternity. And you can see the good Lord, it's almost as if, man, you've been with me for three years. You should know better. So when he goes and calls Lazarus out of the tomb, remember, he calls him by name. Because if he just says, come out, then every tomb opens and everybody comes out. It's the second coming, it's the resurrection, it's the judgment. My brother and sister in Christ, when he calls him by name, how does he walk out? Because you know the problem? When you get buried as a Jew, your hands and feet are bound. My brother and sister in Christ, there's no way he could have made it. That's the miracle behind the miracle. That's what this is going. My brother in Christ, think, go back in Scripture. All of our best players take that extra step. They do more than is expected. This isn't about being a minimalist. My brother Christ, think for a second. What if Saul, who became Paul, after the first boat sinks, he's out there for a day? Why would you get on any more boats? Why would you even bother? I mean, I had fame and fortune and wine, women's song. I had money, I had prestige. I'm not going all the way out there to talk to a bunch of pagans. What if he decided not to do more? What if Veronica, who takes her only veil, disrupts the crucifixion, and in a woman's statue in those days, man, you took your life in your own hands, all you cared about is you wanted to take one more step. What if she doesn't do that? My brother in Christ, what if Mary Magdalene says, man, I am not getting up. I am not going all the way to that tomb. He's dead. There's soldiers there. God, and, pff, don't I know. And then while I'm there, it's already been sealed. You know what's amazing? Every one of those have their name in the book of life. Veronica's name's there. Mary Magdalene's there. Saul's there. What if Paul, what if, what, if, what if Peter went home and said, Honey, I met the Messiah. He wants me to be fishers of men. <laughs> I'll just pat him on the shoulder, push him along. We'll be good. Do we even have a church? What if any of the apostles backed up? My brother and sister in Christ, that's why their name's in a book of life, because they understand to do more. Here you and I sit 2,000 years later. How many talents has the good Lord given you and I? 
Be honest. If you had to sit down and write a list on a paper of all of your talents, how much of them do we put into play every day? Or is the good Lord going to come back and say, I gave you that talent, give it back? Not only does he take it back, but he says, man, I'm, I, it's going to be the gnashing and grinding of teeth. My brother and sister in Christ, you got to be able to do more. The rich man that goes and sees the good Lord, Lord, uh, what do I got to do to attain eternal life? Do you ever remember the story? The good Lord says, honor your mother and father. Do not kill. Do not commit adultery. Do not bear false witness. Do not covet your neighbor's goods or spouse. I did that. Check. Got it. Check. 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 Got them all. And then the good Lord, that was the back half of the commandments. Now the good Lord jumps to the front. Will you love God with your whole heart, mind, and soul, and your neighbor as yourself? Give away your money and come. And then he walks away. My brother says, Christ, you got to be able to do more. It's not enough to be a mentalist. Lord, I, Father, I finally memorized the Ten Commandments. Good. Well, now you know which ones we broke. That way you get it right when you come to see me. Don't get the numbers all backwards. My brother and sister in Christ, let me ask you, are you going to Mass more now than you were last year? More importantly, if there was ever days to go to church in the world to give thanks, to thank him for allowing us, giving us one more day to stand upright, to make up for all the days that we just flat laid out and laid on his leg. My brother and sister in Christ, have you gone to receive more sacraments this year than last year? Have you gone to confession more this year than last year? You are never neutral to him. What part of this don't we get? You're either walking that way towards him or you're walking away from him. I don't care if it's an email, a text message, or a thought, or an action, or just a, a mannerism. Whatever you do either dictates you take a step forward or back. You can't be neutral to him. So it begs the question, why is it that we only do minimal things? I mean, that's all I'm going to do. That's my job description. How many of us have been helping others in this storm? instead of just circling the wagons and taking care of our own. My brother and sister Christ, when the good Lord says love of neighbor, he didn't say love of neighbor when it works for you, when it's between eight and five, and not on my days of vacation, and not when I'm relaxing. Where's the sacrifice in that? It's your ability to take that one extra step, to do that one more thing. Man, are you willing to help your family go that one extra mile? That's the sacrifice he's talking about. If you and I had a jar, and this was the jar, and it was full. And the good Lord hands it to you and says, this is what I want you to do just for today. I want you to go and help them. I want you to break a sweat. I want you to work. I want you to put it all in. I need you out there. I'm not coming back right now. I need you to go help your neighbor. And he's exhausted and tired, and you're just exasperated. I need you to go. I'll give you all of this grace for you and your family, and not a hair on your head will be touched. But every time you complain, and every time you look crossways, and every time you diss me or your neighbor, you dismiss me, I'm going to turn that valve, and I'm going to pull that grace out. And you started out with a 55-gallon drum, and we walk home with a thimble. Because he's saying you're going to have to do more, and this is the time to do it. You and I need to do more today than we've ever done before. It's not enough to be a mentalist. Our souls are at stake. This has all been one big test. That's all it'll ever be. You came on in this day, you're going home on this day. Just because you can spell his name does not give you the right to knock on his door and say, I'm here, welcome me home. Matthew 7, not everybody who yells my name will enter my kingdom, but only those who do the will of my Father. I leave you with the words of Abraham Lincoln. I may walk slow, but I will never walk backwards. You got to do more. Amen? Amen? That's what I'm talking about. My brother and sister in Christ, I'd like to read something to you. You may not know this, but I'm a big fan of Dr. Seuss. There's a Reverend McCray that read this. He's the one that penned it. He's the author. And I got to tell you, he nailed it. I digress. I do not like green eggs and ham. I do not like them. Sam, I am. 
I do not like them on a boat. I do not like them with a goat. I do not like them in the train or in the dark or in the rain. I do not like them here or there. I do not like them anywhere. I tell you what else I do not like, calling good things wrong and bad things right. They try to destroy our structure, barging in with this cancer culture. With angry expressions, they were the center. They came to us with their agenda. You know what else makes me see red? Attacking Dr. Seuss, Mr. Potato Head. Speedy Gonzalez or Pepe Le Pew, the Bernstein Bears, to name a few. You can't say this or you can't say that. Well, I've made enough and I've made my list. Cancer culture has crossed the line and I believe it is well past time. It's time for the body of Christ, the Eucharist, to make a stand. Join in unity over the land on Christ and on solid rock I stand. All other ground is sinking sand. All other ground is seeking sand. This cancer culture, I disagree. We can't say words like he or she. The Bible has said of this issue for me. If this makes you mad, then grab a tissue. Male and female, God created them. And who are we to challenge him? He came to earth as a baby in a manger. For this kind of love, we were all strangers. Jesus came to save the lost when he died upon that old rugged cross. He laid in the tomb for three whole days. Defeated foes were death that were held in the grave. He arose with all dominion and power and might. When the stone rolled away, he was nothing more than light. We can fight the two. The church must stand up. Been silent too long, and I've had enough. The, works at, the church at one time had abandoned her post, losing her freedom, the thing we love most. This is the time we must all take it back. We must all stand together and get on the right track. I started this poem with green eggs and ham. But it's really about the great I am. Amen? Amen. There we go.